Uh, well, I think the future has always been the same. It's uh, communication. And I think now with things like AI on the horizon, uh, designers have to be uh, really more focused on, on message and on uh, understanding the, uh, the reality that's going on because we're all getting kind of fudged over now with uh, fake realities. But uh, yeah, I, I think it's, it's always a human um, process of making things work. I mean, there, AI is an invention of us and uh, it's either going to work or it's not going to work. And we, I guess we, we deal with that in a lot of things so far. So let's hope we're smart enough to make it work. I think there's a lot of potential there and there's a lot of creative potential because you can get rid of a lot of you know, material or ideas and realities that you don't need to deal with. You don't have to go through so much stuff, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm just projecting the future. But I do remember when uh, animation came into television. One of our clients was a, uh, a channel, a uh, television channel, and they wanted us to do some animation. And I remember going to different uh, animating uh, places in New York, and it was in the very beginning, and it looked like they could do a few tri tricks, like this and this. Everything was doing this, you know. So I, I think I, I've experienced that with the computer, you know, when a shading comes in with uh, Adobe Illustrator, everyone's putting shading on color, you know. So there's a, uh, a process that we have to run down, I, I guess, where we all start doing things that look stupid after a while because it's what the technology is allowing us to do. It's not what we're conceptually thinking of doing. So I guess we have to go through that with everything. What I was trying to transmit through the lecture is some of the experiences that I had uh, that just happened very naturally through my life and to try and put them in context with uh, all the students have their own lives to uh, kind of look back on and look forward to. And uh, it's been a fun experience for me and I hope they have the same experience in their careers. So I've had a lot of projects that uh, I highlight. And I, of course, I showed the Olympics and I showed the transportation systems in Mexico. I did the National Zoo in Washington. And I think one of the highlights of, of that um, project was I developed an icon using the side silhouette of the animals for every 36 of them animals. And uh, the hard one was the hippopotamus. I mean, I, you, you ever look at the side view of a hippopotamus? Yeah, you have to really take a good look and you still don't see much, it's like a blob. So I went, I asked the director of the zoo if I could go down and uh, uh, experience being with a hippopotamus to try to understand what they uh, look like. So I spent, I spent a good time with a, a big hippopotamus. I don't know whether it was a mom or a dad and a little baby was a baby. And they didn't do much except every time that big one had the ears go up, the baby reacted. And every time the big one did something with the, no, no sound, but just with the lower jaw, the baby reacted. So I, I saw that more than one time and I thought something's going on there. So I went back to New York and I paid a, a lot of attention to the bottom part of the jaw and the ear. And all of a sudden it was a hippopotamus.